jam-packed show today. You're going to love it. We're talking OTA, some of the news that's breaking, answering a bunch of questions, draft pick trading. It's a lot. And we're all wearing black shirts. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Tuesday, May 24th. Black shirt day, apparently. Mm. Well, it's it's always black shirt day for Jason. Right. That's right. So it only has to be you and I that... Yes. And what's so funny... It's as I was choosing my shirt this morning, I I reached for you know, I was just like I'm gonna go with this one and it was a black shirt and I was like, well, I know Jason's gonna wear a <laughs> black shirt. What are the chances that mm. Andy wears a black shirt? So it it actually ran through my mind this morning. This morning, and I said, no, Jason Moore does not have a monopoly. On you can't the, let on, him take on the black all, shirt. All are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. Yes, yeah, slim down with me. <laughs> Put on your best black and look a little thinner. Now, we did try to persuade both Al Borland and uh, Jason Moore to, you know, it's getting hotter out here in Arizona. And we know that the the black absorbs the heat Mm -hmm. and lighter colors reflect the heat. And so we did try to persuade these two gentlemen for the pickleball activities, the the under-the-sun outdoor activities, to go to a lighter color just for their own health and well-being. Yeah. And so I went to a tank top. How did you guys feel emotionally about it, should I go back to the, the black? The tank top's fine. No, man, you're looking yeah. looking good out there. Yeah, I'm just the saying side, I saw side boobs looking real nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I did see white shirts for one day. Two. And then I'm guessing two you day. <laughs> two days? Yep. Al, and you uh, then you guys did kind of an evaluation of how that went and decided no dice. Yeah, not enough, not enough benefit there. <laughs> Just turns into a wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Wow. Um, welcome into the show. Excited to be with you. Brooks is here as well. hey Are you in a black shirt, Brooks? No. Okay. All right. With Loser. support the team. <laughs> uh, well, there is one week left to pre-order the Ultimate Draft Kit before it's released. So this is exciting. The app, the full UDK. It's all going to be here June 1st, and uh, lowest price is right now. So ultimatedraftkit.com, go there. Yeah, yeah. there are some crazy improvements. Uh, it, we, we've made it across the board, our, our cheat sheet creator. Auctions, if you're in any kind of auction league, it is so much more improved. It could customize to your league, league importing. The Ultimate Draft Kit has a major upgrade, and that's why we're charging – Four times the price. Oh, you you probably missed Mike and I joking about that yeah, on the footcast where mm-hmm. we're really not doing the inflation thing right with the cost because it's the same price has been for seven years. Mm-hmm. But next year. But Mike said we're going to three hundred fifty dollars next year. Yeah, because it's fair market. That's market price. It's worth it. He wants yeah. to, like a fit like a fine fish. Yeah, at a restaurant. Yeah, you're like, oh, would you like the lobster roll or the UDK? <laughs> <laughs> Both are market price. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so ultimatedraftkit.com. Check that out. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Here's today's quick question. It's about pick trading. It's from Rob on Twitter. He says, how do you feel about trading picks in redraft leagues? What do you think about the infamous trade, the first and fourth for the second and third? What say you? Yeah, I, uh, I think pick trading in a redraft league is excellent. There's no reason to take pick trading out of your league obviously if you are in you know one of the the online platforms or the running clock it's it, very difficult to pull off in that setting but a lot of redraft leagues are still you know you get together with your friends you're offline you just have a uh, you know a, a, a draft party and in that situation man trading picks trading up for your guy it is so much fun as the draft goes along if you haven't experienced that 
flip the switch. Add it to your league if, if you're in one of those offline drafts. Uh, well, even if you're online, it can happen before the draft, too. Sure. sure. You could have uh, all the draft order in there, and then somebody says, Hey, Mike, what about uh, you sending me your second and third for my first and fourth? Yeah, I... For that particular trade, since Rob asked about it, I don't like that. I would prefer to have my one, one and four. I all of those picks are very valuable, but you know, just probability hit rates on the first round are so much stronger, and then they just continually go down as you get through the second and the third and the fourth. and And there's still going to be juicy wide receivers available in the fourth round. Uh, but to what Jace is talking about, if you can get it in there live, because the the downside of the snake draft is you're slotted, and there are just there are players you know you cannot get, which is the, the the auction format was invented for this, so that any fantasy football player can go after any player they want. It's just who is going to, you know, who's willing to. What is the the price to get that player onto your team? So when you have the trading in and you you notice a a player falling, that's just that's. It's a whole new level of excitement of like just trying to, trying your hardest to get up or you get a conversation going with one player and it finally it just fizzles out and you're like, fine, take your pick. And then they don't take your guy. Mm, and so, good. so you're scrambling, you go to the next manager, you're like, hey, 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 whoa, 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 don't don't make this pick yet. Let's 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 talk trades here. So it's it's extremely fun when you're in a scenario uh, where you can actually have real conversations. It slows the draft way down. Oh, yeah. You're talking three days minimum for yeah. a live draft. You got to bring your, yeah, you got, you bring your uh, camping gear. Yes. And uh, your sleeping bag and go to work. <laughs> Multi-day camping draft. That You just discovered something. It's like a festival. <laughs> right. Basically, that's, yeah. that's an auction In draft. the middle of the de desert, all black shirts, obviously. <laughs> um, all right, let's move on to news. News and notes from around the league. When this news broke yesterday, I kind of eye rolled at all the reactions, but maybe I'm in the minority. I think I am. Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll uh, mentioned that Rashad Penny is resting a slight hamstring issue during the start of voluntary OTAs. <laughs> the world freaked out. They yeah. said, this is reason. I, I, mean, I don't know. To worry. It, I don't know if it's freak out. It's just the most Here of my we go was one of the headlines. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it I think is is tongue in cheek, but at the same time, the guy the guy has basically been healthy for a six game stretch in his entire. He's going into a, his fifth year. Fifth year, yeah. And it's just is he really? Yeah, th yeah. Last three years, ten games played, three games played, ten games played, and in those ten. You got injured, right? In so it's not really ten full games played at all. He has never been able to stay healthy, but you see it. You, I mean, when he's given the opportunity, he's healthy. Yep. He's so good, and so yeah. I had an eye roll. I didn't have an eye roll over the reactions. I had an eye roll over like, come <laughs> on, man, just just even having that headline exists. Yeah, <laughs> like just be healthy. What's the question is. What has he been doing? Well, I'm sure like, it's... he's not playing football. I know he's still. And look, they're training year long. They're getting their body prepared for the NFL season. This didn't happen on the jog out to the field. <laughs> I don't. I, if it did, that's even worse. <laughs> I you, don't you, know. You're saying a light jog out to the field. And you it's not uncommon hamstring? for players to have hamstring injuries around this time. Rashad Penny just sets off the alarm bells, even though we're months ahead of the season. It it is. It's just a well. Here we go again. It's it's absolutely probably nothing. Nothing to worry about now. We're absolutely so absolutely probably <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly. It just it makes the spider senses. You know yeah. your your hair starts standing up on your arm. Yep. So I, I I do think people might overreact on the Kenneth Walker side and get a little too excited. Like they know it's going to happen. All right, Kadarius Tony, he underwent a, a minor knee procedure during the offseason, earlier in the offseason. Saw some talk about maybe the team's investment in Wandale Robinson and the trade rumors had to do with uh, basically this injury being a precursor to potential injuries down the line. He obviously missed time last year. He's a really weird player to evaluate yes. because 
honestly, I feel like in a dynasty league, his range of outcomes is complete irrelevance for the remainder of his entire career or all greatness. The way, all the way to All the way to star. greatness. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean when I when I look at this team this year, um the 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 New York Giants, I have no idea who the number one wide receiver is going to be. I think it could and should be Kadarius Tony. He looked so good in his short stretches. But yeah, I mean you you talk about in dynasty like a long-term outlook, but that's I think that's true in redraft. This year Kadarius Tony could easily be their number one wide receiver or he could basically not be on the field and be irrelevant and undraftable. And you've just got to kind of call your shot. Now, this minor arthroscopic knee surgery, uh, whenever I see like, oh, should be ready for training camp. Yeah, that's uh, just should. I, yeah, I think remind me in training camp because if he's not all the way healthy, if he's limited, like he's almost there, but he's limited, I get scared. If you're completely 100%, no limitations at training camp, then great. Doug Peterson came out and said Travis Etienne will be a full go at OTAs. So that's good. Yeah. Saw him, saw him running routes, cutting, looking good. Trevor Lawrence to Travis Etienne. I mean, that's what you want to see right now. The Giants did pull it. Going back a story, the Giants did put out a nice, you know, quick Instagram video of Daniel Jones completing a pass with like that target emoji. You know, where you hit right. the middle of the target, so yeah. things are looking good there. Did he hit the middle of the target? I mean, he had to. They um, they don't have the emoji of the <laughs> of the tar <laughs> of the dart going way over the dartboard. You, you got the white zone. You're like, that one was twenty five points. <laughs> they don't make enough emojis to cover Daniel Jones. Uh, Deshaun Watson's lawyer expects the NFL to make a decision on a suspension in June or July. I okay. Uh, I see a question here from Brooksy. Did we take games away from Deshaun Watson when we projected him in the ultimate draft kit? Uh, I did take four games away from him. That's where I statted him, but it's obviously going to be dependent on this news. I don't know how many you guys took away. I took away six. Yeah, I, I'm minus six as well currently. So he's. what this means is there was a, a time a couple of weeks ago we thought maybe he would get suspended next year, not this year. Mm -hmm. seems like this year they're going to deal with it, which – you know, good, kind of. Kind it's, of. Good, it's good and bad in the sense that his he's not going to lose money now. He reworked yeah. his contract. Yeah, no, I know. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. Also, agreed. He sucks. Uh, <laughs> Kyler Murray will not attend OTAs this week. I uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. They, I do know that Cliff Kingsbury came out and said he'll be at mandatory minicamp as well. So uh, there you go. Nick Foles. Oh, he's baby. gonna back up Matt Ryan. All right. <laughs> I thought this was a really nice signing. Like, it's a quality team and a quality backup. You, you've got an old Matt Ryan that you hope takes him to the next level. But when I heard this, I was like, man, that's just a smart NFL move yeah. for, for a team that is really competing. I think we all want Frank Reich to do well. I think he's very likable. Yeah. But Who doesn't just, like Steven like Spielberg? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every offseason, this is the same refrain for Frank Reich. I think we feel a sense of, of pity where he lost Andrew Luck <laughs> suddenly <laughs> uh, during one of our live shows, essentially. And from that time on, we're just like kind of going, well, that's a good move there. Yeah. Carson wins. That could work out. Oh, well, no. Phillip no. Rivers. Oh, that'll work out. Yeah, it was more Jacoby in on the Brissett, Rivers. Brissett, that might work out. Yeah. He's a new quarterback every year for Frank Reich. Well, you got, you got to keep swinging. I don't think we have any other news, Brooks, do we? No, sir. We do have a giveaway. We're giving away a couple classic autographed jerseys on the website, footclangiveaway.com. It's free to enter and autograph Mike Vick Falcons jersey. Jason, you didn't even know about this. I didn't. And an autographed Beckham Giants jersey. So a couple classics up there if you want to win one, footclangiveaway.com. Like I said, it's free to enter. Just giving out some cool stuff to the Foot Clan. <laughs> Mailbag. Bang, oh, bang, ooh, yeah. Is that a black shirt, Kyle? Yes, sir. Okay, you oh, got man. a black shirt. And oh, then, of man. course, uh, Al probably's got a black shirt on. Yeah? It's actually gray today. Gray. Oh. This would have been a better like morning outfit for us with the Suns' departure from the playoffs. Mm. We really should have We should have called it. Well, They're Mike, and I, Mike you, and I could have called each other. What are you talking about? Who? Oh, 
You don't even know who I'm talking about. No. What are you? You've moved on. We, have, the we NBA had a departure. Exist. <sighs> yeah, it was the game you went to, Mike. You paid you paid money to go to that game. You don't remember that? Nope. Check your wallet. Mm, nope. Okay. <laughs> There's nothing there. If you have a question. <laughs> the Suns took it all. The Suns took everything. <laughs> if you have a question for the show, you can dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB, and you might sneak onto one of these mailbag uh, sections. You can click the submit a question button on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com as well. Let's jump into a voicemail. Hey, ballers, in the Dynasty League, would you trade Mark Andrews uh, for TJ Hawkinson and a future first-rounder? Thanks, love the show. Ooh. So the question was, would you trade Mark Andrews for TJ Hawkinson and a future first-rounder in a Dynasty League? Can I, I can I speak as the Hawkinson truth? Of course you can. I, I believe Hawkinson, uh, you know, he's he's – He's very young, great draft capital. I think he's shown enough flashes. I think he's going to be good. I think he will be much better than he was even last year. And as the truther, I would not I, – I mean, I would trade Hawkinson and a future first to get Mark Andrews. Um, that That's how I view Andrews. I think Andrews is – you know, what would you – what would you have traded – five years ago for Travis Kelsey and a run right. of potential five years in a row of the tight end one. Uh, I, I don't know that Mark Andrews will ever be quite as dominant as Travis Kelsey. I mean, he was better than him last year, but there were some things that came about to make that happen. But I don't think he needs to be as dominant to still be a clear difference maker where, you know, the odds on favorite for being the tight end one over the next five years uh, with the quarterback situation with Pitts and um, you know the the aging out of Kelsey, so yeah, I I think Mark Andrews is more valuable than Hawkinson and a random future first. I think drastically. Like I, if I had Hawkinson on my team, this is something I would be more than willing to do is go make an offer because it seems like face value. Okay, that's interesting for the the manager that has Mark Andrews on their team, and I would prefer Andrews look he's in the perfect place where the offense and Lamar like it's being built around Mark Andrews where like Rashad Bateman you know we think he's a, a very good wide receiver can he take the step to be a true number one that remains to be seen meanwhile the Lions you know they just traded way up in the draft uh to bring in an actual number one wide receiver and you still have uh, the St. Brown breakout from last year. So I think that, that, that while Hawkinson will be good, like he'll be good as where if he ends up as the tight end three, you're like, yeah. But the difference between the tight end three and the tight end one is vast. It's it's points per game different. Yeah, until T.J. Hawkinson is Mark Andrews, he's one of a million tight ends with potential. Right. And those are always worth trading for tight ends with established value. And will he be Mark Andrews with Jared Goff? No. No. And will he be Mark Andrews with a rookie? Not no. likely. So maybe three years from now, when a great rookie they draft next year really comes into his own, takes the Lions to where they haven't been in many years while he's playing on his fifth-year option or whatever, maybe then he does have that true dominant breakout. But He's a that's... trade for me in Dynasty, and I know that you, truth or not, like it's not an indictment on Hawkinson, it's a reflection of that situation. Fewest vacated, vacated targets in the NFL. Jameson Williams being drafted. DeAndre mm -hmm. Swift being healthy. If I could cash in on Hawkinson this way, with a future first to get Andrews, it'd be it'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this question comes from Christopher Rubin on YouTube. Hey, footballers, what do you think about fourteen team leagues, and how would you structure the playoffs um, if you had a fourteen team league setup? We have a 14-team league, our listener league, so that we can have as many extra fans in our league. We have made it a 14-team league since the three of us are taking three teams. We sometimes regretfully have a team from last year that gets to play again because yeah. one of us didn't win, um, which is rare, but um, also <laughs> did happen this last year. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, in, in that league, we basically um, – so I love the idea of a 14-team league if you have enough – uh, you know, good managers uh, right. to, to run the teams. Those are fun. They get deeper. They get harder. Um, as far as playoffs. What, do we have six in the playoffs yep, in that league? Six in the playoffs, so a little bit more difficult to make the playoffs. And then 
it basically runs just like your normal 12 team leagues with six in where uh, first two you could do eight yeah you could you could do eight with no no buys mm -hmm. yeah uh, um what's the biggest league you've been in i haven't been in any larger than 14 that are that i cared about. I've, I've done a 16 teamer and it is whew, it's quite the test uh, you're starting some very special players oh yeah especially at the running back position you are you are just getting all the garbage in there all right let's uh jump into another voicemail howdy there ballers and deucers would you rather have chase edmonds ceh or aj Dillon as your rb2 if aaron jones is your rb1 Thank you much. Oh, you had to throw that last part in there. <laughs> yeah. That's Admins, important. CEH, or AJ Dillon as your RB2 when you have Aaron Jones as your RB1. Uh, first of all, I Oof. think this is the first verbalization uh, oh. from a fan of the yeah. Deucers. How did you feel? The I felt great about okay. it. Okay. Um, I knew I, that was near and dear to your heart, so I was willing to really make the commitment. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and, and thank you, Deucers, for <laughs> um, being so good back there. I know my answer. I'm scared of this player in general. I let him go by me in almost all drafts, but it would still be Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I think that the uh, passing opportunity this year, the offense, the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more sure of, at least his role, even though I'm still not like a hundred, I, I, I have Ronald Jones fears, um, but I'm more sure of his success than Chase Edmonds personally. And, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of change in Miami. We don't know how good two is going to be. Um, and then AJ Dillon, I feel like it would be really scary to yeah. start both at the same time and just get everything that the Packers get. And then it feels more like insurance so I, that's where I am. I, I would take Clyde Edwards-Alaire out of the three if AJ – really in either situation, but if Aaron Jones was my RB1, uh, even more clearly. It's so strange when you have a situation like that where if your RB1 was a different player, like maybe in – call it Joe Mixon, right? And then I'd answer AJ Dillon. But if you make it Aaron Jones, then I'm answering somebody else, and independently you should think, hey, the better player should play. But you're also about risk aversion, and you know, and maximizing upside. Yeah, and when when Aaron Rodgers throws four touchdowns that one week, and you get nothing, that's a problem. So I agree. I think Clyde is the answer. Vacated targets very often go to the running back position. Kansas City has a ton of them. Green Bay has a ton of them. Right. Both of those teams do. But Green Bay's are going to go more to the Aaron Jones side, most likely in the passing game, even if AJ Dillon is capable of it. So I'll I'll agree with you on that one. And yeah, I'm gonna go with Clyde as well. An interesting note that we had we just found out. I don't know how this made it through. Like no beat reporters, nobody talked about this. Uh but last so coming into last off season, coming off of the Super Bowl win, Clyde went on a, a podcast and he was talking about well, he ended up having a gallbladder surgery and like it had shut down. I don't know, you know, the specifics, not a doctor worrying about gallbladder stuff and I believe it's a pretty easy surgery normally but he mentioned he got down to 160 pounds like he, so he didn't have a true off season he was still going into the to training camp with his body not not coming off of a full off season like he's still recovering so I thought that was at least interesting of he wasn't fantastic in his sophomore year it almost looked like he may have taken a step back so we we will see moving forward into year three if he has a full offseason, what does that, that actually look like for him? Do you know what I would have to do to lose 40 pounds? I mean, give me, a gall gallbladder? give me a gallbladder surgery immediately. I think the – when you are – like, Clyde's a smaller framed dude, so when you aren't able to keep working out vigorously, your muscle mass will go I, away but, quickly. But, so he was, but he was bad with a gallbladder. Right. He was also bad without a gallbladder. He was not bad his So he year. needs half a gallbladder. Is what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, put, put <laughs> half of it back in and then unleash them. Yeah, I mean. What I, does a gallbladder even do? Does anyone know? I think it it, it, it uh, helps with the, the bile and breaking down fats. Oh, don't answer for real. We need <laughs> We were looking for something entertaining. Uh, it does nothing. Scientists are uh, lost and you can get rid of it. I was, I figured it was the like the backup bladder. How many organs do we have that we don't necessarily need? Oh, at least 30% of them. 30% of them? Yeah, that's a number larger than give... I would be comfortable with. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can give a kidney, right? You don't. Yeah. You only need one kidney. A lobe of a lung. So like that, you know, right? Like a chunk of a liver. Yeah. So yeah, what, what man, 30% might be right here, Mike. <laughs> Your gallbladder. You can't give up any heart though, right? You can't like give them a ventricle. No, I don't. Th- I don't need recommend- to keep them all. Don't yeah. recommend that. <laughs> Can you get extra? Can extra I like hearts? Just an extra like. Uh, hey, just in case. Like an extra valve. You know what I mean? Like oh. I got a V8. To oh. your V6. So all right, you upgraded. Oh yeah, I'm just preparing for you know. <laughs> oh, I, I already know I'm gonna need a couple extra. They Let's get those put in there now. They don't do any preemptive. Uh, Valve surgeries, probably. Yeah, I, like, everything looks fine, sir. Uh, put it in. Yeah. yeah. I want a super heart. <laughs> I want a like super, to turbocharge this bad dog. I want dog. a super heart. <laughs> what, why, sir? Uh, pickleball. Pickleball and I eat a lot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. You don't need your appendix, right? Oh, yeah. Get that out of here. That thing, you know. It's just it's a hazard. It should take it, take it out, you know, on birth. <laughs> Get it out of there so you don't have any of that appendicitis going on. <sighs> okay. Well. Your spleen? Do you need a spleen? Uh, I think you can live without it. There you go. Can 30, you? 30% might I be right. I think so. I, I'm looking at the deucers and no one is confirming all of this scientific data. Uh, Nobody maybe, at all. Because we run a fantasy football podcast. False. <laughs> based on this conversation. <laughs> Josh chimed in. He said, don't forget about the appendix. Yeah, but yeah, what yeah. about the spleen, man? We're asking yeah. spleen questions. Don't oh, oh, you can still have a fairly normal life without one of your lungs, a kidney, your spleen, appendix, gallbladder, adenoids, tonsils, plus some of your lymph nodes. You want to yeah. lose weight? Yeah. I just found your path. I'll take it out. <laughs> Let's go. If you take all that out, you could probably that's you, you could put in a storage pouch or something. That, oh, the storage with pouch a zipper. Is, it's already there. <laughs> what is happening today? All right, we're gonna take a quick break and get back into the questions. All right, this question comes in from uh, Lane on YouTube. Is it okay to take Cooper Cup with the one hundred and one overall? Sure. Yeah, I th- I think absolutely it is. Um, I would not personally do this. I think that the um, the positional difference, value, the positional value, and the difference that Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey can give you, I would still take either one of them over Cooper Cup. But I've I've been looked staring at the one hundred and three and thinking that that's where I am comfortable personally saying I want Cooper Cup over the next highest tiered running back. I'm fine with that, assuming it's a PPR league. Um, if you're in, uh, you know, a half PPR or standard, obviously his, his value goes down there. I would say, sorry, Mike, go ahead. Last year, Cooper cup was a top 24 wide receiver, 94% of his games where Debo, who was, you know, the wide receiver two, 75% Cooper cup was a wide receiver one, 82% of his games that dropped down to 56% for Debo Samuel. He was, he was such a positional advantage and a, I th- it's fair to say, okay, well, coming off of that historic type of a season, or like a true dominant player, can he actually repeat that? And I mean, you know, the the variables are are minimum that it's, it's going to be Stafford back. You don't have Robert Woods there, so th- that'll be interesting for for a Cooper Cup, which Woods I guess missed half the season. But yeah, they have Allen Robinson. Yeah, but I'm saying so. There is there are some changing pieces. It's not. Com- a complete re-roll for Cooper Cup. It's yeah, as we, close as you get these yeah, days. Yeah, we, we would not expect him to have the otherworldly season he had last year. And you can't just you can't just say, well, he did it last year, we'll get it this year. But just to give you an idea of, like, it, had you drafted Cooper Cup the 101 last year, that would have been the best pick. I mean, you could have gotten him later, so dumb. But you know what I'm saying? He scored more in a PPR league he scored more points than Josh Allen, the quarterback one. Uh, he's, you know, 40 more points. He scored 70 more points on the season than Jonathan Taylor, the running back one. So, yeah, Cooper Cup should be in the conversation at PPR League for, you know, where, how high are you going to take him? Yeah, I've got no problem with it, especially if you're in love with later running backs. I mean, there are a lot of running backs that are going, going to go. Rashad Penny, for example. Maybe you're in love with leaning on Rashad Penny for your RB two or something like that. I mean, cause you hate yourself. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. We fall in love with players. Cam yeah. Akers is another one people might like. J.K. Dobbins. There are a bunch of running backs that, like, does any of us, would we be shocked if Cam Akers was a top 10 running back, even though we don't no. have him ranked there? Oh, Opportunities there. Yeah, that, so, and Cooper Cup, just historically wide receiver, is less likely to get hurt and miss games than a running back who's I mean, getting 300 plus carries if he's entering the antonio brown era of his career where he's right. got three three years where yeah he's not the number one but he's the two three somewhere in that probably shouldn't be overlooked as an option for your team however we've been down this road with michael thomas and that michael thomas question and so you see all the different outcomes that can happen yeah, and antonio brown became antonio brown basically in year four that's where it started so, and when did he stop? Stop. Uh, I, well, I mean, th this past year he uh, he he stopped, but he we had seven years or six six years of true dominance. So five after the breakup. Instagram question from Adroko: How much faith do you have in Jameis Winston this year? Uh, zero, zero, <laughs> zero faith in Jameis Winston. That word does not come near Jameis Winston for me. But that does not mean he is not a sleeper quarterback. Yeah. Because of the weapons, Olave, Michael Thomas, who just released a – I believe he released a video to hype people up about his recovery, uh, but it made some in the medical community <laughs> question his recovery. Whoops. But you have, what, Jarvis Landry now. Yeah. So and Olave. there are weapons. Yeah. Um, I don't know how often he'll throw this year. Yeah, I, I have. I was surprised that Jameis Winston fell to quarterback twenty three in, in my stats because I do see a path where he could be, uh, you know, a top fifteen quarterback. He has the weapons, he has the arm talent, the history of a lot of stat production. I don't think the team. I mean, it, this question of how much faith do you have in Jameis Winston really shouldn't be asked to us. Should be asked to the New Orleans Saints, and I think their answer is. Not a ton, so we're going to kind of oh. rein him in. Enough to make him the starter, but yes. they don't have enough faith to just say, go out there, call the plays at the line of scrimmage, go win the game, do whatever you got to do. Uh, they're going to put him in their system, and I think that will kind of nerf him a bit fantasy-wise. Yeah. Yes, in the system, but he's the guy. Like I, Where last year you had the quarterback battle of, is it going to be Taysom Hill? Is it going to be Jameis Winston? It's Jameis. He's, he's the quarterback moving forward for this team for the next couple of years. This is year eight for Jameis Winston in his career. So we've seen a lot. Yep. And um, he'll be equipped to succeed. And if he can be efficient like last year, which means not throwing interceptions, throwing touchdowns when it matters, having a passer rating that was way higher than his entire career last year because of those factors – he could be interesting on a streaming basis, and you you just, you know that Jameis can get it done. So that, like that proof of concept is there that he can absolutely get it done for fantasy football. Uh, but faith is is not very high. Yeah, we had expired after seven years. Uh, Dynasty trade question from the website Allison in Nashville: Michael Pittman versus T Higgins. Oh, man. They were back-to-back -back in the 2020 NFL draft. They're very similar in age. Pity City's a little bit older. This one is... <laughs> this one's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I've seen people trade a lot for Michael Pittman in Dynasty Leagues recently. T. Higgins is also very popular right now in Dynasty Leagues. I prefer Higgins. I believe that the future in Indianapolis is going to involve other bodies than Michael Pittman. I think he'll be good, not great, for the remainder of his career. And I just like the attachment to Joe Burrow for T. Higgins. That's yeah. that's why it's my it's uh, T. Higgins for me. You know, you know, I'm a Michael Pittman truther, and I think I I believe Matt Ryan is a massive upgrade at the quarterback position over Carson Wentz. I think Michael Pittman can be even better this year than he was the past year. But we know that Joe, Joe Burrow is great, and we we know that while T. Higgins and Jamar Chase aren't likely to, you know, like have their big explosion games on the same exact week, it can happen. But frequently throughout the season, we're, you're not going to see both of them be dominant. But because Joe Burrow is the quarterback, I'll go with Higgins.
Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I echo everything you guys say. I love disagreeing with you, but I, I don't hear. It's weird to prefer the wide receiver two for a team. But is over he the actually? Clear, well, yeah, sure. Maybe he's the wide receiver one, but he's, a, he's at least seen as the wide receiver one B, or at least in fantasy, the wide receiver two on the team for sure. Always sure. drafted that way. Um, versus a guy who's just all alone with great target market share, who we like, and Michael Pittman. I like both these players, but yeah, Joe Burrow, greater sign, yeah. future quarterbacks of Pittman. Would you look at it like Larry Fitzgerald and Anquan Bolden? That's exactly the comp that I always Because you never to. really thought of Anquan Bolden as like a complete Robin to the Batman. Right. But you knew that Fitz was better. So Batman and Superman. Is that what it is? That's that's how I look so at Chase it. So Chase is Superman. I, yes. I, I believe so in, Higgins is Batman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's Tyler Boyd? Robin? Is mm -hmm. he? Uh. Aquaman? <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, okay. I think we all agree yeah, there. Back in the day, I think Larry Fitzgerald finished as the wide receiver one, and in that same year, it was wide receiver seven for Anquan Bolton. And that, that's, that's very similar to how I have – I've got uh, T. Higgins at eight – and Jamar Chase at three. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. And you had confidence in Kurt Warner back then in Arizona, and you have confidence in Joe Burrow now. Mm -hmm. So uh, Instagram question, if Lamar Jackson's available in the fifth round this year, are you drafting him in the fifth? Nope. In uh, the Need all the context of, like, how many quarterbacks have actually gone – Maybe there was a huge quarterback run, and then Lamar Jackson was left alone in the fifth. I still believave in Lamar Jackson for that high high end fantasy output is in his range of outcomes, but you need far more context for that question i don't you don't <laughs> no, I, okay i I mean I like Lamar Jackson. I think he's gonna be good for fantasy. He's gonna run the ball a lot. But I don't think he ever gets back to where he's throwing for 35-plus touchdowns and running for 1,100 yards. Um, he's lost weapons this year. And in the fifth round, the fifth round is where I'm taking a quarterback that I am very confident is a is a guaranteed top three guy. Uh, or, could, else, yeah. or else I – there's just good players. There's good wide receivers in the fifth round that I would prefer if I don't have – you know – can Lamar Jackson finish as a top three? Absolutely. But do I think he will? I don't. No, I mean, he was 10th in 2020, 15th last year, missed some games. It's the shine of the MVP season is still there, and that makes it hard. I mean, I remember this happening with Matthew Stafford after the 40-touchdown season with Calvin Johnson. Sure. And it was about four or five more years of maybe I'll get that again. And in the fifth, that's too expensive, I think. There are a lot of players that can give you a big week. Lamar's got a better floor than those guys. Mm -hmm. But, um, all right, let's go ahead and turn to an Instagram question from Craig. Where's the best place to take Trey Lance? <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, 49ers OTAs, I believe, start today. So get ready because beat writers are primed to analyze every mechanic of Trey Lance Believe nothing out of that city. <laughs> believe if, nothing. Trey Lance, Just the injury reports. Be, no, believe the opposite of whatever. It, he is extremely difficult. It, it's for me. Trey Lance comes down to what did you, what did you believe the the ceiling for Trey Lance was last year? Because it's, I'm just you're going to move that forward. He is quarterback thirteen right now on underdog, so not being drafted as a QB one. I. People are looking at this scenario from all different sides of, well, Jimmy Garoppolo is still on the team. Why haven't they traded him? Why haven't they cut him? And it's, what do you believe in Trey Lance? I believe that Jimmy Garoppolo killed his trade market because of the surgery and that before the season starts, he will either be traded or he will be cut because the, the 49ers can, uh, they can cut him with essentially zero financial repercussions to the, their cap. And that Trey Lance will be their guy moving forward, and he's surrounded by weapons, and I think that top 10 is well within the range of outcomes for him. Everybody makes a list every year of players you're willing to miss out on. Yes. Trey Lance is on my list. Willing to miss out on that experience. Yeah, he, he could absolutely 
have a monstrous fantasy season with what he's able to do on the ground at the quarterback position. So yeah, if you miss out on Amanda, you're going to miss out on a really, really good pick. But I, I lean that way too. I'm, I'm willing to miss out. And, and the question is, you know, what's the best place to take Trey Lance? To me, if he's there in the 10th round and I'm futzing with, you know, Matthew Stafford drops to the 10th, the Trey Lance is in the 10th, and I could pick one of those two guys, I would go Trey Lance because I, I want the the upside of massive performance. You know, last year, Matthew Stafford was a, a, a high-end quarterback on the course of the season because he played the entire season and right. always had enough stats. But if you look on a weekly basis, he had half of his weeks were just completely worthless and so I would rather swing for the fences, but I only want to do that when it costs me nothing, and that's tenth round plus. I'm not. I'm probably You're not competing not. for Trey Lance, right? And that, and that's to me, that's with Jimmy Garoppolo gone. And when Which Jimmy Garoppolo leaves, if that happens, you're probably not getting Trey Lance in the tenth round. So, and every day that goes by, there's lower odds of that happening. Andy, would you? It's a very specific question, but would you rather take Lamar Jackson in the fifth? Or Trey Lance as the QB thirteen. Yeah, as the QB thirteen in the draft. Mm -hmm. So that means what tenth, eleventh, twelfth round. Mm -hmm. Probably Trey Lance. Okay, because I'll I'll have a backup plan mm -hmm. at that point. Might look like Matt Ryan though. Yeah, and you'll have better depth at wide receiver or running back right. because of that fifth round pick. I, I would do the same. Um, YouTube question from Mike Simon: Can you import your draft team into the UDK? Great question. <laughs> um, yes, you can. If you are on ESPN or uh, Sleeper, we have the or Yahoo or or Yahoo. I mean, it's just awesome. Uh, yeah, import your team. Uh, it th that'll take settings and rosters. It's it's really nice. The draft analyzer is part of the UDK Plus, so we will look at your roster and evaluate needs, concerns, areas to address, things to pay attention to, risk. And we'll grade it. We'll tell you how great you did or how terrible you did. Yeah. D plus. <laughs> that, that's the only grade. We, it can yeah, get, yeah, it, yeah. The well, algorithm's so complex, it can only give out one grade. You want to keep people hungry. Yeah. Don't rest on your laurels. Do better. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Swifter, Javante, and a keeper league. Oh, man. Let, let me give you a scoring system. Yeah. Because that matters. Uh, half. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh man. Um So I, here's here's how I look at Javante. it. Javante. Um I like Javante a lot. I think he's a stud going forward. I'm going to stick to my usual way that I view keepers, which is I don't view them as like a dynasty league and, and what is the two, three, four years I'm going to get from a guy because we've seen too many times we've, we've our main league of record is a keeper league that we've played in for, you know, uh, well over a decade and players come and go so quick that when you're only keeping a couple, the age really doesn't matter that much. The, the contracts don't really matter that much. And so I'm taking the player I think is better this year. They're both young to me. That's Deandre Swift. You're going swift. Yeah. It, it, like right now in in my rankings with 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 the stats and everything, Swift is higher than Javante for me. Uh, not by a wide margin, but he is. And it's one of those things of like, if I'm in the draft, would I really take DeAndre Swift there over Javante? Because of, I think that Swift is a huge risk. I mean, you have we have two years of uh, his body of work in the NFL. Great player, great pass catcher, but. You know, thirteen games each of those two seasons. Now, running backs, they're going to miss some time. That that happens. But Swift just has the the concerns of a guy that every year he's going to miss like four or five games. Yeah, I I really like I I'm I have found myself really liking DeAndre Swift. It would be an easy decision in a redraft for me. Like I would draft Swift well ahead of Javante in a redraft. He's Honestly, he would be like in consideration for my guy territory for me, except he's a Detroit Lions running back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I don't do that no more. <laughs> Lessons learned. Multiple times. I, I, I pluralized it. <laughs> Lessons learned. Lessons. Uh, sins as yes. well. Yeah. Um, all right. That is going to do it for today's show. A reminder, FootClanGiveaway.com if you want in on a classic 
Michael Vick autographed jersey, classic Odell Beckham jersey, and check out ultimatedraftkit.com because it's out in a week. Yeah, baby. Ooh, baby. And then it's going to be a lot of fun as we head into the 2022 season. So thank you for joining us today. We'll catch you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.